Can you imagine that only 60 years ago, these locations were completely submerged underwater? It's almost impossible to imagine that the Aral Sea has almost completely vanished, leaving behind a barren desert scattered with the remains of forgotten ships. This tragedy is unfortunately one of the many instances where desertification has destroyed the natural environment and people's livelihoods. Desertification is simply the transformation of a semi-arid landscape into an arid landscape, usually caused by human activity. Almost all semi-arid landscapes on Earth inhabited by humans are affected by desertification. Such areas include India, the Mediterranean, the Sahel region in Africa, the Pacific Southwest of North America, Eastern Brazil, Mongolia, Australia, the Middle East, and Central Asia. Imagine yourself as a farmer in a developing country. Remember, this is a semi-arid landscape, not a lush or wet climate. This is you. You own a decent amount of land with some grass and some trees, but you don't know how to use it. Unfortunately, you live in a country with extremely limited economic activity. So, how can you make money? You think about it, and then it hits you. You can cut down your trees, sell the wood, and even make a house. And you're extremely thrilled that you can make some money from this. Okay, so you go around cutting down all your trees, and you've sold all the wood. But what can you do to make even more money? You can't grow trees, so you think about it, then it hits you. You can buy some animals and herd them on your property. You let your animals graze in your land, but the problem is that your animals eat all of the grass. And I mean all of it. Without plants in the ground, moisture levels in the soil drop dramatically, turning your once grass-filled property into a barren desert. You try to plant things, but without moisture in the soil, nothing can grow. Now before you think about Jawas, Han Solo, or Luke Skywalker managing to make a living on the desert planet Tatooine, don't. This is a lie. Without rain or a nearby source of water, it is impossible to return this landscape to its former state. The once prosperous lake in Central Asia has almost completely been reduced to less than 90% of its former water volume. Before the 1950s, the Aral Sea was once an oasis in the desert, providing its communities and the entire Soviet Union with fish. However, in the 1950s, the Soviet Union deliberately diverted the main rivers that fed the Aral Sea to irrigate cotton plantations. Over the next 50 years, the Aral Sea's water volume dramatically decreased, and as a result, fishing communities greatly suffered, and the local economy was almost completely destroyed. The Aral Sea has left behind a barren desert, scattered with sparse shrubs and ships, a grim reminder of our impact on the environment. The Sahel region in Africa has long been prone to desertification due to its close proximity to the Sahara, since it acts as a transition zone between the arid north and the lush south. Farmers and herders in this area have, by necessity, overexploited natural resources to sustain their livelihoods. Unsustainable farming, irrigation, and grazing have stripped the soil of its main water sources and nutrients, causing the remaining plants to shrivel up and be consumed by the Sahara. The drought crisis in the Pacific coast is a result of human exploitation of natural resources. Any scarce rainwater in this region is quickly diverted to feed the needs of people and irrigation, leaving little water for the natural environment. Over time, the landscape has become drier and arid. This situation is extremely critical because California is one of the major food providers of the United States, and some of the densest populations in the country are on the verge of running out of water. The only logical way to stop this process without destroying local economies would be to invest in these regions' economic development. If the world was to pour in money into the industrialization or development of these regions, farmers would no longer have to exploit resources to make a living. As horrific as the consequences of desertification have been on the planet, it can be seen as a necessary sacrifice for the economic development of countries. Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan have enjoyed the benefits from their massive cotton operations, allowing other industries such as oil to gain steam. Similarly, the massive cultivation of the Pacific coast was a leading factor in the economic boom preceding industrialization in the region. Has desertification been an expense that all societies must give into? Is the destruction of people's lives and the sacrifice of several generations necessary to eventually obtain a more successful economy? Desertification is atrocious, and hopefully one day the Aral Sea might return. However, if not, it will stand as a reminder of our failure to respect the environment.